Hello everybody, I'm Michael and today I'm going to be showing you guys an easy way to AFK farm Data Lattice and Duskalight Shards within Destiny 2 Season of Opulence. The Moments of Triumph and the Tribute Hall has just come out and that has kind of made everybody material poor. I've been kind of working my way back up on Legendary Shards but it's been difficult. I started with about 500 and only back up to 200 now. It's taking a while but as you can see here this has been fairly successful for me. I have about 1200 data lattice here. I haven't been able to use this method yet with dust white shards, but that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do in this video. So normally I would not recommend doing AFK farming because I think it's just a detriment to the community as a whole. I think it's bad for people that are doing it because there's a chance that they could get banned or something. And it's also bad for the people that are on their team, especially if you do this in Crucible. But this method does not require going into any activity that is competitive, and I'll show you guys how to make sure that you're only matching up against people who are doing this method and you're not kind of hurting anybody else's progress. So there's really should be no reason for you to get any kind of repercussion or anything, and you can also feel a lot better about it because you're only getting matched up against people who are also AFK farming. So the way to make sure that you are matching up against people that are AFK farming is to drop your light as low as you possibly can here. So just put on everything you have that's not 750 or whatever your max is. And the easiest way that I found to do it is to go over here to everybody's favorite clan vendor and hawk tamer, Hawthorn. Oh, I guess I got a clan reward. We'll go ahead and open that right now. There's a go figure and some enhancement cores. That's nice. But what we're here for... Are these greens the greens that everybody looks at and just wonders why are they there but here we go here's a reason for them you're going to want to pick up all of these and her stock rotates every day i believe she'll have a weapon and three armor pieces every day but the armor pieces do change because i bought her armor pieces yesterday because i started this method farming yesterday and she had different armor, so that's maybe why you saw that I had boots here that are green from that same set. And it is just purely because that's what she sold yesterday. But you should be good with yeah. just buying these four, equipping those, and just dropping your light down. Maybe you have some stuff stored up in the vault or can pull something out of the vault that's lower light. Another way to do this is if you have some of the Eververse gear or the Festival of the Lost Masks or anything like that. The Eververse cosmetic gear is great because all of the light is 10, but I've already dismantled all of my Eververse gear just purely so that I can get some Bright Dust so I can buy the Bright Dust tributes because I'm definitely trying to finish and get that emblem, or not the emblem, I'm sorry, the emote as well as the Bad Juju Catalyst, and I just think this is the easiest way to do it because you can get 10 tributes based on this method and i think that's just great it allows you to save a lot of time and it also just kind of makes it so that you don't have to mind numbingly farm materials you can kind of use this method while you're afk doing whatever so i'm going to show you guys how to do it now we're going to go into a forge unfortunately there are only forges on the edz and nessus so you're only going to be able to get dusklight and data lattice so for today, I'm going to be using the Volander Forge. Last night, I just loaded up the GoFanon Forge and did this method all night for about 8 hours while I slept and was able to get those 1200 materials that I showed you earlier. I actually got a few more than that, but I've already spent some buying some of those tributes. So essentially how this works is whenever the Forge activity completes, whether that is failing or you completing it and beating the final Forge Saboteur, you are going to be granted with four planetary materials as well as some glimmer. And normally this wouldn't really be a huge thing because spending probably 10 minutes to do a forge and only getting four materials is not a great kind of rate of farming there. But with this method you kind of save a lot of time because what you're going to want to be doing is right before you get off you're going to want to load up the EDZ or Nessus. Go to whatever forge you would like to do this method on. I do believe it works on all of them. I can confirm that it does work on the Volander Forge as well as the GoFanon Forge. I'm assuming that it works the exact same way on the other ones. And even if it doesn't, that's still one on each planet. So I guess you could just use those two to make sure you're safe. So you're going to want to go over here just to the forge like normal. And you're just going to want to load up the forge. And the way that Destiny Matchmaking works for the forge activity is it matches you with people that are similar light level 
And since your light level is so low, it will only match you with people that other light levels are around your level. They may not be the same, but they will be around the same because there are just so many people using this method right now. You may already know about it, but it just kind of helps out some people here. So as you can see, these enemies, I can shoot them. I can do whatever I want. I mean, there we go. Mind my aim there. But you're, what you're going to want to do is go over here to the Volander Forge. You're going to want to ignite the forge. And then you're going to want to find some guardians. And once you ignite the forge there, that's probably where you'll leave or go do whatever you want. Maybe just whatever you need to do. And you're just kind of going to let the game run. And normally, the problem would be that you'd get kicked out of activity for being AFK. But since this takes such a short amount of time, whenever you get orbited back up to the Finding Guardians or Evaluating Guardians screen, it resets the timer on the being AFK getting kicked. So it does make this a lot easier. See, we've loaded in with two people here. Both of them are AFK. This guy has some of the Eververse gear on here just to kind of lower his light. This guy has a mask. So just as whatever you can do to get your light as low as possible. I'll go through one run here just to show you guys what happens. So there we go. The timer starts at one minute. And it takes a few seconds for it to load in. But as you can see, all of these enemies are question marks. You can't do any damage to them no matter what you do. You cannot attack them at such a low light level. So let's see. Here we go. There I go. And so everybody's dead now. These two people are AFK. And ideally, you would be too. I just want to show you guys how this works. So we're just going to wait for this 30 second clock to tick down now. You started a minute, but it definitely doesn't take long. And this may seem a little bit slow, but if you're doing this AFK, I mean, you can do probably one run of this every two minutes between finding guardians, letting it load in and everything. And if you're sleeping for eight or ten hours or something, then this will just give you a whole lot of runs of this because you can maybe get 30 runs an hour just not doing anything, which I always think is great. You're being as efficient as possible while you're not on the game. And then you can go enjoy doing fun things like raids and buying tributes whenever you get back on because you don't have to worry about doing any of this kind of boring material farming. All right, so as you can see, the timer has run out. The enemies are about to despawn. There they go. And the forge will give you some rewards for failing, which is a little bit weird. But as you can see, there we got some glimmer we got uh maybe 200 glimmer i think is what it is once i go pick it all up okay i guess 190 glimmer as well as four dusk light shards and so you may be thinking four dusk light shards is not a lot but if you just keep doing this overnight while ever you're kind of sleeping or just whatever you want to do maybe out at work and it'll just allow you to be really efficient with this you'll be able to get materials while you're not on the game and this screen right here is what will reset your AFK boot timer so that you'll never get kicked from this activity. I've done this for probably 12 hours now, and I've never been kicked once. Doing this in a fire team obviously ensures that you will never run up against anybody who's actually trying to complete the forge. But given just the great number of people doing this method right now, I don't ever think it'll really be a concern of finding somebody who you're kind of detrimenting by doing this method. Once again, we'll probably just wait. There you go. And we got two more people that are AFK. I guess he has a macro set to jump just in case. But you definitely do not need a macro. My keyboard can physically not set macros. And I've been doing this just perfectly fine. But that's the method. You're just going to want to drop your light. Go into the forge. Just kind of sit here AFK. Go do whatever you want. Go make your uh, famous grilled cheese sandwich or whatever you want to do. And then just come back and go to your postmaster. All of your rewards will be sent to your postmaster, so make sure you have a little bit of space there. And then you can go pick up all of your materials, and you can go buy all of those tributes that have just been destroying your bank of materials and glimmer. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as comment any questions or anything you may have, and I'll see you later.